Hello Battlecats players, my name is Chance and welcome to my god. Today we are going to be taking a look at a very interesting cat. Uh, we're looking at cat unit ID number 14, Cats in a Box. Cats in a Box can be purchased for 90 cat food after completing Egypt in Empire of Cats Chapter 1. Much like a handful of the other cats we've covered, Cats in a Box has a weird cycle with when it's relevant versus when it's completely useless, and it seems to only really fluctuate between those two points. However, in this video, we are going to take a look at all the factors contributing to Cats in a Box and perhaps enlighten you as to the best use cases and best practices involving this cat. My hopes is that by the end of this video, you have a thorough grasp on Cats in a Box evolutions, best use cases, advantages and disadvantages, as well as the best way to use your NP as far as allocating talents is concerned. Now with that quick introduction out of the way, let's take a look at Cats in a Box evolutions. Cats in a Box evolution cycle follows the exact same as all of the previous special cats. That is to say, it evolves into Cat Gang at level 10, and then at level 20 plus, after completing Box Cat Awakens and unlocking the true form, it evolves into Heavy Assault Cat. As far as Box Cat Awaken is concerned, it is a level comprised of two stages, Boxing Clever is the title of both stages. One is Expert and one is Insane Difficulty and both cost 150 energy. If for whatever reason you do not get Cat in a Box's evolution on the first stage, you are guaranteed it on the second stage. As far as when the stages are made available, they will be made available the 15th day in any month from 700 to 1400 hours. That is to say, 7 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon. Also, on the 16th day of any month from 1700 to 100 hours. That is to say, 5 o'clock in the evening to midnight. The first appearance of this cat was in April 18th of 2015. And for the record, those dates of availability for the stage and level are true for both the English and Japanese version of the game. As far as animations and sprite appearance goes, the normal form, Cats in a Box, depicts three little cats riding in a cardboard box with a banana logo on it. One of the cats has spots and the attack animation is done with a spiked club. The in-game description for Cats in a Box reads, These poor guys have been abandoned. They are now fending for themselves with great justice and speed, and that they provide an area attack. The evolved form, the cats take on a gangster-like appearance, and the box now has wheels with a flag and orange logo on it as opposed to the banana, and the attack animation is done by slamming a mace. The description now reads, Cat Gang, the hard life turned them towards the wild side. We should avoid them for now, who knows what they'll do, and they still provide the area attack. The true form, or Heavy Assault C-A-T, now has robotic legs instead of wheels, which make it quite tall. The attack animation has drastically changed to a mini blaster that shoots lasers with a watermelon logo on it. It's quite different and quite a departure from the other two. The description for Heavy Assault C.A.T. reads, An elite unit who keeps the peace by rushing at the enemies of society might weaken black enemy attacks and still provides the area attack. That's really all there is to say about the evolutions and appearance of this cat. Now let's move on to the performance regarding it. Cats in a Box is considered to be a rusher before anything else. If, for whatever reason, you're unfamiliar with what a rusher is, rushers are extremely fast units, typically with shorter than average cooldowns, long backswings, high speed, and short or mid-range damage. They often have high attack per hit and are able to do lots of damage quickly. In a personal sense, I find there are a great deal of Battlecats players who completely ignore and neglect the viability and power of rushers. 
not to sugarcoat it, but Battle Cats has quite a bit of grinding to it. This can be in the form of grinding battle items to make certain stages much easier or even possible depending on your cat layout, or grinding out talent orbs, or various upgrade materials needed for true forming certain units in the late game. Rushers are necessary for making that grinding process even remotely bearable as too much time on certain stages can really exhaust you and fatigue you mentally, emotionally, and to some extent, spiritually. As far as pros are concerned for cats in a box, area attack, short cooldown, and high speed. However, in terms of cons, low attack rate, short attack range, and fairly high cost, which we will get into in a little bit. Under other traits to consider, while true formed, they have a 30% chance to weaken black enemies to half damage. I have some personal thoughts on why I'm not a huge fan of this particular trait for this particular cat, but I will talk about that a little bit later on. Overall, however, while it is clear that cats in a box is a rusher more than anything else, their low attack rate and short attack range really don't help them out very much in terms of being a quote-unquote good rusher. Now that you have an overview of the simplified performance metrics for Cats in a Box, let's move on to discussing strategy while looking at some gameplay. Before we get too far along, as far as pricing is concerned, the Chapter 1 cost per Cat in a Box is $750, Chapter 2, 1125 cents, and Chapter 3, 1500 cents, so certainly not very cheap. Now for the important bit. How do you use this cat? Well, in the early game, you really only use it when Cow Cat is on cooldown. That's really its best use case as it maintains the line and buys Cow Cat sometime they come out. If done properly, you'll also be able to do some fairly substantial damage to the enemy base before any enemies populate. This is really the only use case for cats in a box up until really towards the late game. And this is only because it is outshadowed by cow cat and the crazed variant in virtually every way. The biggest thing that hurts cat in a box is actually a triple threat combination. Firstly, its short attack rate makes it really only get one or two hits off. There are no survivable traits to this particular unit. That combined with its short attack range makes it so it is always in the danger zone. And then to boot, its damage just really isn't that good compared to the cats that outclass it. Really, it will be completely replaced as soon as you get either crazed cow cat or maglev cat. The only real caveat and exception to this is certain cat combos it has might make it a little bit more viable. But really, this is a unit in sad need of buffing. I actually happen to really like the style of this unit, and I think its attack animations are fairly neat. However, from a pragmatic sense, it just lacks raw stats. After true forming it, that stat loss becomes almost unbearable. I would make an argument that this is quite possibly one of the most underwhelming true forms in the game. I understand that it also has the weaken ability, which to some degree does have a place within the meta. However, the fact that it only affects black units and happens to be attached on a cat with a painfully low attack rate make it almost completely useless in the face of other weakness inflicting cats. It is quite simply outclassed in every conceivable way. However, there is a small argument to be made that this cat can be made viable through the use of talents. However, we will discuss that at a later section of this video. Now that we have discussed the viability of this cat and checked out some gameplay, let's now move on to discussing its available cat combos. Up first, we have apples and oranges. This is a cat-based defense up of the small variety. It involves cat gang and apple cat and increases the overall health of your cat base by 20%. By and large, I find these to be completely useless in the mid and end game. 
simply because at that point the enemies do so much damage and come out in such large amounts that there is no way 20% base health is going to make a meaningful difference on the average. However, for the early game, I suppose it can make sense to buy you some time for additional units. However, even if that were to be the case, there would likely be something wrong with your fundamental team building more so than you just needing more health for your base. Up next, we have Peach in Banana. This is a unit speed up of the small variety. It involves Momotaro and Cats in a Box. It increases Cats' movement speed by 10%. I actually really like this. Movement speed tends to be an underrated cat combo in this game, but when you are grinding out stages as I mentioned earlier, this certainly goes a long way towards maintaining sanity. So for that reason alone, I'm actually quite fond of this. Next up, we have Post Apocalypse. This is unit attack up of the small variety. It involves Rock Reventures, Biker Cat, and Cat Gang, and increases Cat's attack power by 10%. Much in the same vein as movement speed increases, this will actually go a long way towards maintaining sanity during some more grindier stages. However, a 3 cag combo is quite steep for a small increase to attack power, despite the fact attack power increases being some of the more useful in the game. In other words, this is a fair combo. Use it if you already have the needed cats, but bear in mind there will be better options involving more rare units. Next we have Wheels of Fate. This is a cannon recharge up. It involves Empress Kronos, Tricycle Cat, and Cat Gang, and allows the Cat Cannon to recharge 10 seconds faster. I actually think that the Cat Cannon recharge ups can be fairly useful on specific stages in combination with specific cannon types namely zombie stages with the corresponding holy cannon. However, for most general squads, having a 3-cat-cat combo applied to cannon recharge time won't make very much sense for most of your gameplay. Next up, we have Working Vacation. This is a massive damage effect up of a small variety. It involves Bath Cat and Heavy Assault Cat and increases the efficacy of the massive damage effect by 10%. Bear in mind this only impacts cats with the trait massive damage, and while for most stages this isn't incredibly useful, and seeing as how it only requires two cats being Bath Cat and Heavy Assault CAT, I actually think this is quite good. Up next is a virtually identical combo called Dream Box. This massive damage effect up small involves Adventurer Canna and Heavy Assault CAT and increases the efficacy of massive damage cats by 10%. My thoughts on this are identical to the previous one. It's fine on certain stages. Now that we have, with some degree of thoroughness, gone over all of the applicable cat combinations, let me show you some of the stats and various charts regarding cats in a box while reading you some trivia. Prior to version 3.0, Heavy Assault CAT did not have any anti-black ability. Heavy Assault CAT is a reference to Star Wars ATST. And finally, all of the forms have a small PONOS text on the bottom left of the right side of the box. It might not be visible in evolved form, but you can just about see part of the text behind one of the wheels. On a more personal note, I would really like to see this cat get a buff. I think its animation is quite nice, once again, and I think Ponos should really revisit this cat and perhaps retool it by either increasing its attack rate or at the very least increasing its attack range in its true form. I feel like the area attack in combination with the ability to inflict weakness could be pretty impressive on some stages. Perhaps by even removing the strictly black element to its applying weakness text, it could see more overall gameplay for slower plays. Um, making drag and stacking a little bit easier, for example, could be a viable use case for this cat. If retooled properly, of course. 
Let me know what changes you would make to Cats in a Box to make it more playable down beneath. I'll likely be featuring some of them in shorts content moving forward, so just do be mindful of that. Now that we've gone over some trivia and discussed some more of my personal thoughts on Cats in a Box, let's move on to its talents. Interestingly enough, talents actually offer the opportunity to turn Cats in a Box around. Firstly, and quite possibly most importantly, it gains access to the massive damage trait, only costing 75 NP. And whilst admittedly I have forgotten to include it in my script, I believe massive damage increases damage by 7 times, which is certainly a leg up given the fact that by this point in time, Cat in a Box, even in its true form, has drastically fallen behind other cats in terms of raw stats. Up next, we have Immune to Weaken for 75 NP, Resist Slow, which reduces slow duration by 16% and improves by 6% per level up to 70% for a total cost of 125 NP. And finally, you have the Defense Buff and Attack Buff upgrades. These offer 8% increases to their respective traits per level up to 80% and cost 125 NP to max out each. As far as how to best use these talents, the massive damage and attack buff take priority over really everything else. After those two have been maxed out or close to it, consider the defense buff as your next important upgrade. The Resist Slow and Immune to Weaken, however, are just really not worth sinking any NP into. NP is undeniably a very precious resource in this game throughout all of the mid and end game. To waste it on Immunity to Weaken and Resist Slow, in my opinion, is just awful. At least in its true form, in certain Four Crown Legend stages, there's also an interesting use case where you can take advantage of its movement speed and, ironically enough, short attack range to get close and personal with certain bossing enemies. What this essentially allows you to do is enter into their blind spot and do massive damage to a few of them. This can be quite a fun and satisfying way of playing the game. That actually about wraps up my commentary for Cats in a Box and all of its various evolutions. If there's anything you would like to add or include, or feel like I've misrepresented or missed, feel free to put it down beneath in the comment section. I'm always quite appreciative towards those people. Now on to the outro, there are just a couple quick things I would like to address. First and foremost, to those who have been partaking in the community section, thank you so much. I love hearing from you guys. I'm happy to hear everyone is enjoying the content being released there, and I'm looking forward to releasing much more. I'm of course planning on making small tweaks to the channel here and there to just increase its running efficiency. I do have quite a bit going on in my day to day, and I can't always afford to work on this channel as much as I would like to. As such, I'll be making steps towards future-proofing this channel for days where I am made unavailable. Ultimately, I doubt very many of you will notice any significant changes. However, if you do notice them and you do like them, feel free to let me know. Ultimately, this channel is for you and other members of the Battle Cats community. I hope that I am doing my part to add as much value as I possibly can. If there are any changes you feel like this channel would benefit from, please let me know. I do my best to read and respond to every comment, and I will always take somebody else's advice under consideration. Thank you so much to those who have contributed and offered critical feedback so far. I hope that you continue to do so, and as always, I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe for Cat God's Blessing, and until next time, goodbye, I'll talk to you later.